unlike some of the other budgets, we reflect both wages and um, health benefits in the library's budget. I was instructed to prepare, to prepare it without a health insurance estimate this year, since it's always so variable. We never really know what the projection should be. And so we yeah. do have that hard number now. So I need to ask for an increase <coughs> in the budget to reflect the health insurance change. Okay. I need to request $5,427 be added to the bottom of the library budget for health insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. 5427 5427 So do you want to talk about your bottom line budget? Yeah, I can, I can tell you where the changes fall. Um, yeah. I've brought you pretty level budgets the last few years, and so I tried to build something that was conservative but did yeah. add some money this year. Um, yeah. There are increases to um, wages, both in full-time and part-time. If you look at the bottom line for part-time, it looks like a reduction. That's just senior staff retiring, newer staff coming in at a lower wage. So I haven't cut anyone or anything like that. Oh, okay. um, there's a very large jump in what, what's called the sick leave pool, which is really m the money we use to pay for all substitutes. It could be for, for vacation. It could be for sick leave. It could be uh, for staff training above their normal operating <laughs> hours. We have not had enough in that line for many years, so that's mm -hmm. what that jump is about. And then there is a little bit of money in the merit pool for 2020 um, wage changes. Um, all of the health insurance things are self-explanatory and not part of my <laughs> control. And then within what I call the operating budget, the money that gets given directly to the Board of Trustees that pays for all of our yep. operating expenses, we have um, some, I mean, they're pretty minor changes, things that we can't control. Um, we carry an insurance policy that's going up slightly. The contract for our HVAC maintenance is going up. Uh, we also have a, a custodian who's on a contractual cleaning mm -hmm. arrangement, so that's going up. Mm -hmm. um, the software we use to run the library, basically, that's going up. And we also um, participate in the state um, downloadable program. We have never successfully put that money into a budget. It's always ended up being a default year or something like that. So we find ways to pay for it, obviously, but it, that commitment on our behalf to be a member of that consortia and to pay for the license for that yeah. is in the budget this year. And then uh, we participate with Unitil in a natural, the natural gas uh, budget program, and they've given us a higher number for the next six months to 12 months. So we are asking for, money, for more money for that. Yeah. So that's, what the, that's the sum total of what's going into the library budget for next year, yeah. of, an, of an increase. Mr. Waddell? Nothing. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Wolsey? I love the library. I spend a lot of time there. I got a little scared when I read about bed bugs. Yeah. What are we? What are we doing? Are you getting help with that? Are you going to be able to? Uh, I don't know. Uh, pipe some some substance in that will kill any little critters that shouldn't be there. So fumigating. I check my yeah. When I <laughs> we check every book that comes back to the library twice, as a matter of fact, and that's a matter of course. It's not just because of this particular. Yeah. problem. We yeah. check them for their condition, whether or not someone spilled coffee on them, whether or not they have any sort of a bug issue, yeah. anything like that. So we're always looking. We always have been. We're fairly confident that our building is remaining bug free. And it's just catching those couple of books was very alarming. We've had a review by um, Ned Kittrich, local um, gentleman who runs a pest specialist program uh, company. Um, he, he discussed the steps we took, and he also did a you know a cursory review of the space. Yeah. He doesn't think that we have any problems where the books were returned. Yeah. So, just continuing to be vigilant. Uh, well, yes. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm watching. What I, I was a little horrified when I saw that. Um, you have outstanding staff, and Thank you've you. done a marvelous job uh, bringing the library modern. Thank really you. getting getting new programs and things. So I very much. Uh, appreciate going in we might you might make an announcement that donations maybe uh, books or uh, CDs or whatever I've been going through my things and dropping oh, off some yes. extra you know CDs or things like that you can always use maybe some yes. donations we take donations year-round the friends of the library host two sales for us we ask that you not bring us things in poor condition mm -hmm. dictionaries encyclopedias or textbooks but otherwise we'll take anything hardback paperback right. music cds dvds yeah um their two sales basically fund the summer reading program we offer every year so that's a six-week program right. of events and prizes and things like that right. so every donation is money towards the summer reading program so please bring them in at any time Definitely. right and thank you for having the um the box there and i hope you have it Again, fairly soon for the SPCA. Mm. That's my very, very favorite charity, and I was delighted to see that you had that. Uh, 
Sure. Coming up in November will be uh, the New Hampshire Food Pantry, and then in December we'll do the Toys for Tots box. So, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Regina. No. The budget looks great, and thank you for all the work you do at the yeah. library and the of yeah. huge part of the community that you are. Thank you. She's made it modern. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very special place, and you lead the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in tonight. Absolutely.